go outside and play soccer by herself. We have Make sure I want to entertain her like Snoop Dogg. He's an icon in, in all festival life. Yeah. Most of the yeah. icon in, in, in the world. Yeah. But I feel like they be stupid. They gonna get caught. Yeah, they cheat with their dick. Like we cheat with our mind. I feel yeah. like no more, but before I let you explain that, I want to show a little clip of a little monster. Why is it? I'm on Pandora, YouTube, I'm on the students and everybody, Carl. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find. It is what it is. It's fine. I'm going to grind the camp. This is the coldest fucking thing that's going on. Yeah. These are the realest niggas out here. Yeah, you already know. Like, for real. Like, this is oh, God. I go off the mentality of the woman. And I know if I, if I know my woman. What's up, me? Let's go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the smartest dumb people, and I'm the host, Anthony That Dude Johnson. And always, 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 it's gonna be somebody at this table with me. Today we got Coley Cole in the building, my new co-host. Welcome to the show, Queen. We yeah, appreciate you. I'm so you. glad that I actually got a co-host, and she's a female. So now we can have relationship topics, yeah. and I don't feel That's biased. Right. Then we got my guy Kevin Kev in the building, man. We appreciate you for coming That's to right. the team. Let's get straight to it. This is the smartest dumb people. Tap in Tuesday. I got some news. So first thing is, we will no longer be doing shows on Fridays. Uh, Cole is my new co-host. She will be doing two Tuesdays a month. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have a show every Tuesday. So I do I do appreciate you, Cole. Thank you for shouting out the smartest dumb people. Thank you for getting mm -hmm. the fans that you got in here. We appreciate that. I'm happy to have her. Like I said, we can now have... Uh, both point of views. Yeah, yes. both point yes, of views. Yes, boy point of views. We yes. Don't have it. Everybody was everybody was struggling with that just watching three men on a panel talk shit about relationships and stuff like that. <laughs> right. So it's definitely good to have somebody that's gonna have an opinion on relationships, uh gender roles and things like that. So let's get straight to it, man. It's New Year's. Happy New Year's to everybody. Right. Happy, happy, New happy, Year. happy New Year's to you. We got it. It's only right yes. to discuss New yes. Year's resolutions. We it's made it through it. another one. It's only right we start yeah. with the Queen. What's your resolutions, Nicole? You know, I don't know if I really make resolutions, but I always have a word that I use or that I get, and it, it stays with me throughout the whole year. Um, last year, my words were grow and rise. Mm. So to be on this pod podcast is definitely growth. And first of all, let me back up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Queen. Thank you for the yes, opportunity I appreciate for, to be able to have this platform and to use our voice for our community. So I thank you and then thank you as well. But yeah. I would say my word this year was going to be empowerment mm -hmm. because what God has blessed me with, I want to be able to bless others with to right. be able to use. So. Right. This is my third grade girlfriend. This is my first. Oh, this is her and Kalina was my first girlfriend. I gotta get this out. Mm. The world need to know. This is my third grade girlfriend. I'm sorry, baby. I just had to <laughs> let the world know. Uh, uh, I am. I am happily. Lights gonna go out. You gonna know why? Yeah, he got us in trouble. Kev, yeah, what's your New Year's resolution? Man, man, it's not so much about resolutions. I'm a piggyback. First of all, I want to say thank you for having me here in this new year. Thank you very much yeah. for meeting your new co-host. Uh, lovely young lady, our queen. But check this out. I'm going to piggyback off that and say I just want to um, keep growing. I want to keep rising. I want to keep doing better and better. Only person I'm in competition with is the old me. That's it. I just want to do better. I want to be more healthier, not just in body, that too, but spirit and mind. If I can and grow that and take my family with me, oh, I promise you, I feel like I'm in the promised land. Mm, I like that. There you go. I appreciate you. Talk that. to so, me now. My New Year's <laughs> resolutions, first thing is, like I was telling Cole before the show started, me and my lady just went and got some diet supplements. Okay. Uh, we yep. bought a, a walk Can we shout out to JD at uh, Rexy uh, Nutrition? Go, right shout out to you, JD. I got your email. I see that you're real about it. He is real about helping uh, brothers uh, be uh, uh, safe and, uh, and do it the proper way. 
You want not, me to get my fucking right? New Year's resolution? Yeah, yeah, my bad. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so my New Year's resolution is basically to, you know, be healthier. And like I was telling Cole before the show started, man, I literally, me and my lady, we literally sit around and we take shots. We like to eat soul food. We like to do things. And, okay. and I'm a huge part of the problem. So in order to be a resource to change that, I have to, you know, stop drinking as much. I have to make sure that I'm doing what I have to do to be healthier, man, because... You know, we already black. High blood pressure, high yes. hypertension, a bunch of yes. issues. And, and I think it's <laughs> diabetes. Of, yeah. Heart disease. That that's that that runs in our yeah. community. My yes, ba- it does. My baby working out right now on the treadmill at the crib watching mm, the show. Mm, Let's mm. get straight to the show. So, first topic, man, Nick Cannon and these family photos. We gotta discuss this, man. I've been I couldn't wait to discuss this, <laughs> but we it's only right we do it now. Nick Cannon and these photos, man, it was going all over social media. Everybody was having mixed feelings about it um i i want to start by saying when i made the post i was saying that this is what's wrong uh with our culture because we're accepting a dude that got baby mamas and nobody mm. should want to be a baby mama regardless of how much money That's you got, got no kids. uh and, and now these women are taking pride in this there's nothing to me there's nothing cute about the photos because you're watching one man create five or six different broken homes just because you're a supportive father financially you can't be that you're not the man in the house he can't handle all of those families what's your opinion Kev? okay well from what i hear though now i know he is trying to repopulate the black community i will say that now nick is not shy i don't think he ran across a woman he didn't like however from just from what i've been hearing he does not only financially take care of but he takes an active role in their life that's what i'm here how can you take an active role in a whole if you got six households right how can you be that active a uh, 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 children need a father in the home so Permanently, not 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 a temporary father, mm-hmm. not a halftime father. They need a full time father, and you can't tell me that gives off full time vi- father vibes. It's impossible. So too many fucking families. That picture right there with how many of them is in there? Not all of them, right? No, it's it's different families. Bro. Okay, so that means he splits his. Th- okay, now maybe he don't give as much time as you think he probably should. But if the fact that he's taking those pictures mean he present. Now, he could be like, I don't know, Flavor Flav or somebody else or, or Pete Diddy. Don't, that, you ain't never seen no pictures of them and their kids. I, but, but from what I've heard, just, just now, I'm just only getting the scoop like you. I've heard that he does take an active role in their life, not just writing a check. And let's be real, that's a nice check. What's your opinion, Just Cole? saying. So are you saying because he does that, it's, he can take those pictures? It's okay to take those pictures, or what are you saying? I'm saying that I, from what I've heard, he does actually show up and do stuff with yeah. him, and, and you know, be an active role in their life, not just hi, take a picture and then take off. Uh, I right. heard. Well, now I'm just saying that that now, now I don't know because I'm not there. I don't know him or his baby mamas, but what I've heard, he does take can, an active can we, role. Can we speak on the representation of those photos? Uh, I get you're not in the homes mm-hmm. for us to know, That's but true. I'm trying to speak on the reputation well, of those photos. Well, the first thing I looked at, I was, I looked at the women. Mm-hmm. And how they were posing, you know, I was like, okay. And I don't know much about Nick Cannon's life, but I looked at the women, and then my question was, why do they need to be in it? If it's just him and his kids, why do he need to have a picture with all of the different? You think a woman ain't gonna pose but, with Nick but, Cannon but, in the? But kids. but Nick Cannon got money. Yes, yeah, right. And that doesn't make it right. But it doesn't. I, I, it I don't doesn't think it makes make it, right. it right. But it's what drives a lot of people. Money drives and it people. gets and clicks. It gives them fame. And yep. it gives you. I'm Nick Cannon's baby mom. But doesn't right. make it right. Personally, it's not something. I wouldn't do, but you can go take a picture with your your child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't need mm-hmm. to be in the picture. But if you got five, this is my opinion. You got five, six baby mamas, mm-hmm. and I don't even like that. That word alone makes me want to puke in my mouth. But if you got five, six baby mamas, yeah. and you're taking photos with all of them plus the kids, it, to me it just gives off this is what's broken in our community. I get what you're saying. He's yeah, trying to yeah. show them off like uh, this is uh, uh, yeah, something to a, 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 a stand to. You know what I'm saying? This is something that we should uh, asqu- acquire to. You know what I'm saying? And that's not what we're trying to do. I, I totally get that. But wouldn't you rather him taking the pictures with them than you hear about uh, him going to court every other week for child support? I don't think he should have random kids by random women. I agree with that. Period. Um, and that's why I don't have he, any kids he, he or no baby mamas. He's definitely fruitful. Just saying, ladies. I don't, yeah. I, I don't so have any kids got, or baby mamas. All right. We got Jason. He have to accept the women gone what? What? Gone one. 
gonna want someone there permanently, not temporarily, nor matter how much money they throw at him. Well, that's the thing is that like I'm I'm just trying to preach to our community. Like I want my I want my my fellow brothers to settle down. I want them to be yes. uh, do right by their women. I want them to be faithful. I want them to not have kids by random women. I, I want agree them with to create that. Families. I want them yes. to create a village. We're not doing that. And when we but, when we idol mm -hmm. worship somebody like Nick Cannon, because yeah. like I said. When I when I posted that, it was a lot of baby mamas talking about I wish my, my kid. That's the problem. You're trying to correlate your situation to this millionaire. And I'm saying no. Your if your home is broken, it's broken. And I don't mean broken like they ain't taking care of the kids. Broken home is when the father is not present in the home. And all I'm saying is as our community, we gotta do a better job of trying to build a village instead of because that's what's happening to these kids. These kids yeah. is running wild. They ain't got no fathers in the home. And it, it could be deeper than that. There are single fathers out there, too. That That's the mother true. don't want to be there. Yeah. We need to start preaching to our people, creating a black family, wanting to stay. A, a, not even, it ain't got to be a black family. Because I'm in an interracial relationship myself. But just creating a family and a foundation that's a village. It could be black, white, yellow, green. It don't now, can matter. we apply this same thing to um, AI? And he got like, what, 11, 12 kids? But he love them all. And he's all, he there, all in with them. But but that's still to, to me AI is a baby daddy, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, he ain't married yeah. to all them, but but, but at least he's there though. That, that's the point. I, you was talking about the broken home. Now maybe you're right. He can't be in ten different homes at once. I so, agree with that. But he can at least show all them kids that hey, I'm your dad. Just because I'm not with your mama, don't mean I ain't about you. True. Yeah. Mm. I, I I agree with that. And now yeah, there's there's many factors that plays with two parent home one parent home mm -hmm. but i have seen kids come from two parent home and they're more jacked up thank than you a person that, that yeah, we, we raised by our single queen <laughs> that's right that, mm. so it just it just depends because if you got two people that's jacked up guess what you're creating a jacked up kid that's right, right? Them again. so mm -hmm. i mean it just it, it 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 really just depends on what you consider yeah but for me it just it, i just want to preach like i said you can I'm, take I'm, a picture with the kid i'm trying to <laughs> preach to my brothers like i want to i want to walk down the aisle and watch Kev get married that's right you know i want to do that like i want i want to i, I, I want to do that i'm tired of seeing my brothers this is my opinion on my yeah. brothers i'm tired of seeing my brothers hang out in the clubs mm -hmm. i'm tired of seeing my brothers trying to find somebody to hook up with i'm trying to find somebody that i can i can make love to and raise these kids that's right and and, and show my kids what love is because mm -hmm. i'm telling you right now I, I'm gonna say I hate to say this. I, I wasn't gonna use the word black community, but I, I just noticed it's really prevalent in our community yes. that we're okay with being baby daddies. We're okay with being yeah, absent out of yeah. our children. I won't fuck. I don't fuck with men that don't take care of their kids. I don't. I don't deal with dead people. And dead. then when we do that, we plan right into the government's hand. Yeah. They want to get us on all these services, all this government help and assistance. But then, oh, oh, go find your baby daddy so we can get back with him. But they want to keep creating a system to where we. Or uh, uh, it's okay to have a broken so, home. So like Other say, races, they don't do that. So like Cole say, what's the resolution? The right. resolution is if you can make sure the person that you have kids and lay down with is somebody you can see a future with. If yeah. not, wrap it up or do whatever you got to do. I'm not saying don't have fun, but don't be making babies with somebody you don't see a future with. Then, mm -hmm. plain and simple. Try to have a future with somebody, and I agree with that. And that, and that's me, right? Now, I'm telling you right now, I'm old school. I have no kids, and that's why I don't want to be a baby daddy. I don't want a baby mama. I want us to be a family. Now, I'm not gonna say I ain't, you know, been lucky a few times, but that's the main driving goal behind me not having kids. I don't want a baby mama. Uh, shout out to Jonathan. Jonathan said, uh, "Parents' uh, ability to parent is the most important part." Uh, yes, it is the most yes. important part. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not judging anybody that's raising their kids in a single parent home. I'm saying that it's time for us as uh, fuck the black community as a society to yeah. stop okaying random hookups random uh, sneaking links random do anybody want to go to the movie and hold hands anymore yeah. right well I, I, uh, it goes back to what we were talking about off the cameras commitment we are not taught how to commit the right way okay. we are taught to commit Get 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 all the women you can. Get that man Be for a you. Get you the know, bag. Yeah. But uh -huh. but but it wasn't always like that, you know. Nope. So we got to go back to where did that change? When did we? Because we were committed before. There was two parent homes. Can there I was, tell you when it changed? Families. When so change? when did it change? When well, women. 
Well, okay, you remember when um, there was a time when it was the man was supposed to go out and make the bread, and the woman was to be a homemaker. Take care of the kids, the home, come home, your dinner's ready. But guess what? The bills was always paid. Your hair was done. You know what I'm saying? You the kids didn't need that. But I'm going to say this is when it changed. When women decide to go outside of the home now, they want to be Miss I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-T. Is this a good segue? Is this a good segue? Okay, for that go ahead. To but come on now. All right, all right. right. Okay, but go ahead. Because, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we can sink so, our teeth into this so one. A young, lady yes. out, a young lady came out on social media and basically was talking about how she's submissive to her man. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody on social she media be. attacked her. Let's watch the mm -hmm. clip of her being uh, talking about being submissive to her man. We'll be right back with y'all. Things I do for my husband that most modern women don't agree with. In no particular order, number one, submitting to him. I don't look at me and my husband as equals. He is my head, he is my leader, and I respect and treat him as such. And there's nothing oppressive about it. This man treats me like a princess, and I love it. Every single minute of it. When you have a man who you know truly has your best interest at heart, it truly makes submitting come easy. Not always easy, but definitely worthwhile. Number two, I ask him for permission on certain things before I do it. Let's say a group of my girls and I want to go out to a place that we've never been before. I'm not going to just go. I'm going to ask my husband if he's okay with me going before I make any type of plans. And that's out of respect because if he's not okay with where we're going or if he's not sure about the location, then I'm not going to go. I also wash his clothes. I clean up after him. I cook for him. I serve him his plate and I take it back when he's done. I cater to him. I literally hated to him because he is the king and he should be treated as such. And I let him have the final say on decisions. I trust his judgment at the end of the day and I know that he is always open to hearing and considering my thoughts. But at the end of the day, he's the man. I let him have the authority, let him have the final say on what works best for us. And even if things don't go as he planned originally, I'm not going to go ha ha and laugh in his face. I'm going to still be by his side and support him. It's okay. Lesson learned. Now on to the next thing. Thank you. I'm gonna let Cole. Right, so that's yes, cool. I'm gonna let you. Uh, but let, let, before we do that, that she she after she was being attacked on social media, she had a rebuttal. Let's watch the rebuttal. We'll be right back with y'all. A few days ago, I made a video saying the things that I do for my husband that most modern women wouldn't agree with. And y'all, when I tell you the comments had me dead, the amount of people who were so flabbergasted that I consider my husband my leader and that I ask him for permission before I do certain things is honestly quite shocking. For one, I didn't understand why so many people were so pressed about a relationship that has nothing to do with them. And for two, I don't understand the fuss that a lot of women have with a woman considering the man that she married her leader. I mean, why wouldn't you marry someone whose judgment and leadership and guidance you can trust? Why is it a comical thing to respect your husband so much that to even ask permission before doing certain things just to make sure he's okay with it is something that's deemed as comical or oppressive? Like, why do y'all get so angry when you see a woman respecting her man? I mean, listen, y'all could be Miss Independent if you want to, but one thing about me, I learned from my foremother Eve. I'm not trying to be like her and disregard anything my husband says just to do my own thing. No, I'm going to make sure my husband is okay with everything that I do. And this is my marriage, not yours. So you don't got to be big mad in the comments because I'm chilling. I All right, so that's the clip, man. I'm going to be the first to admit it. I was really turned on by that. I, she turned me on. Mm. She, tur she turned me on. And I wish more women. She got a sister or cousin? Or? <laughs> that's, that's why. I, I'll tell you like this. That's why I'm engaged to be married because... My woman lives by that code. She she sounded like she was talking about my relationship. Mm -hmm. I run that household respectfully, and, and my wife uh, really runs that. I mean, my fiance really runs that household. Uh, a lot of cats be like, "Man, why you go home, man? You always..." And it's like I, I submit to her because she's done so right by me. I don't want to ruin that. And that, to be mm -hmm. honest, with you, it's kept me faithful. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. It kept me on the right path because I'm like this. This type of love don't come often and once you get it you got to hold on to it so if it takes being submissive to your mate and understanding she does this she washes my clothes she brings me my plate she she washes it and, and i'll do this shit too sometimes i like to be submissive and cook for her and make sure she has what do you want me to do babe you want me to wash the dishes you want me to uh wash the clothes i'm willing to help because if, if a real relationship is a partnership and somebody gotta lead somebody gotta follow and like i told Cole, i'm a point guard Cole is new on the team and, and I said, this is your team. This is our team. It's not just my team. I'm a point guard. I know when to lead. I know when to follow. I'll pass the ball to You got to pass the rock sometimes. You know yes, you do. So what's your opinion on that video, Cole? Um, well, I heard her say words like, 
why would you not trust somebody that is that can you can that guides you and you can trust them mm -hmm. and lead that that's huge um commitment mm -hmm. and trust Thank is you. big and if and if he if she is doing all that for him I hope he's doing the same thing for her. And if a woman can feel safe and protected and stable, yes. then we want to take care of our men. Yes, ma'am. But then I don't want men to get women being independent wrong. A lot of times men get us being independent as we don't need no man and da da da. No, it's not that, but we know that if it came down to it we can hold our own it's not that we don't need okay. a man but we know we can hold our own when it came down to it um so women who just like totally disregard men you know that's what they prefer but so submissive is used so loosely these days and it's used as in such a negative connotation right. that it's not always bad to be submissive. Well, when you go to work, you got to submit. Exactly. Let me jump in real quick. The submissive, this is where the submissive part got uh, misconstrued because people got to thinking that because a man can, you tell you what your woman what to do, that's being submissive. No, you're making her do something. I'm going I'm to take something out of Fifty Shades of Grey. He said, I inspire my woman to be in submissive. Yeah. So that woman that's sitting there telling her, telling y'all that she cook, she clean, she serve her man, she do all that. You think that man ain't coming home every night? That's you think, now, 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 now yeah. I'm, I'm going to state one thing that she even said it, and I agree with that. When we're in a relationship and she's married, so we're in a marriage, it's not an equal relationship, okay? The man is the head of household, but with great power, Come what? Great responsibility. Thank you. But, so, but, 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 if you're going to say that, why? He has to be following who? If you're going to say you that. You got to be following God. You got to be following Christ. So that's right. Yes. If you're not so that's following true. If you're Christ, not, if you're going to use that in but that I'm saying, connotation, then I'm not following you. Right, right, man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we're going to assume. We're just going to yeah, assume that we, Christ is, is the head of everything. But the man is the head of the household. But at the same time, though, mm -hmm. he, he cannot be sitting here, sitting back, Playing the game, letting his woman do all the work, ordering her around, making her dance on one leg and bark like a dog. That is not the way to treat your queen. You are supposed, she is supposed to be cared for. She is supposed to feel secure and you're supposed to lead her. She's supposed to know that she can trust you. Just because you make a mistake, that ain't nothing. But overall, she must know that you can lead her all to the, the promised all land. Game you got, man, I'm you. trying to understand all this fucking game you got. <laughs> how are you single? Respectfully. I don't know. They're not ready for it, I guess. So maybe I ain't. I, in front of this I just ain't laid this. I, in front of this no, no, right, right. <laughs> that, that, see, really, I guess I ain't just ain't laid this upon the right ear. But you know, too, even she touched on asking her husband for permission. What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with. No. But the thing is, you can't make me. You have said make. You can't make me do anything. But I you can't. Like no, I said inspire. I feel like you, you cringe. Oh no no, I, no okay. I, I did what? cringe. No no, no because, I said because because I did cringe when he said make because that's that's. No the, no, I, I said. It. Remember I said okay, you know, you, but, but listen. I said uh, like 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 you oh, said you are supposed to inspire her. Well, well, if so, I said make, then I probably I, I, mean, I said you are supposed to inspire your woman to well, want to be. You said yeah, make, you uh, said but, inspire. Oh, then I apologize. But, but, I, but okay, that's then. What I'm saying. You all right. Inspire me, but, but my bad. That, that independent little person right. was no, on no. your shoulder. It, no, no, it was right. But the reason why I say make is because you can't make anybody do anything. And so when it comes to the word submissive. A lot of people look at that word make and they, they tie it in with submissive as, oh, I don't have to do anything. You can't make me do anything. And so it becomes a negative a, a negative connotation. Yeah. But in reality, for me to just go and say, hey, honey, I'm about to go out here. Can I go with my girls? You know, some women, if if you have an attitude of I'm going to make you, it's going to be in yeah, a no, negative no, no. way. Well, right? because uh, there might be something. That's unrealistic. If but, I wouldn't expect my wife to ask me permission for every move. But here's the thing. Not every not move, every but here's move. the thing. But she, what if he knows something about the club they're going to and he could say, you know what? Y'all might want to try a different club instead of that when I know something. And maybe well, she want to run it by him because he's the head of the household. Well, so so now let's, let's turn that around. Hey, I mean, babe, be I want to go to the uh, strip club with me and my guys. You now, what if she you say, you know it. what, uh, I'm not cool I, with I that. Ask, I, I'll be honest with y'all. I ask my lady, uh, I kind of ask her, I kind of like say what I'm going to do and hope she don't fucking give me no kickback, which she normally does because my girlfriend <laughs> wants me to be fucking locked in the house with a ball in the chain and I can't do nothing. But when I say something like, hey, me and Kevin are about to go out, 
I'm but there's right, nothing wrong with running that by your lady, and I'll be the first to say there's nothing wrong. Because what if she has some plan for y'all and she like, no, I need you to stay home tonight. But that's the thing, you gotta communicate. If yeah, y'all I agree not with that. Communicating regularly, yep. then that's an issue. That's like true. y'all, if you just communicate, you like, babe, I'm running out here. I mean, it shouldn't even be an issue. But if I have to literally, I gotta go ask my man if I can. No, no I think that's it shouldn't that be a chore. No, that's no that's it shouldn't. Call, call her, her her little independent angel her show. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but do you remember what? Me. Okay, now do you remember wow. back to when I said before we segue with this? I said that's when it changed when women went outside the home and started working. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna piggyback over what you said. You said, uh, yeah, we made it clear that we don't need a man, and that's true. So when hold on, so when you started saying went out and start working and making your own money and taking care of you and your kids, and if you got kids cool if you don't you started saying i don't meet a man so when you meet a man you're saying if i if you're in my life because i want you in my life and guess what i'm saying i totally get that but you can't but what you can't do I, I, you but what i'm saying you can't re- try to revert back from that take that stance you miss independent you're doing your own thing making your own money you get with a man you're with him because you want to you're not with him because you need him. So then, but don't have that same man come into your situation and go, oh, well, you're supposed to pay this. You're supposed right. to do this. Wait a minute. What happened to Miss Independent? But, in, but, but, independent. But now, I don't mind coming in. But, and, 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 and hold up. I don't mind coming in and fitting in with you. But I shouldn't come over and take over. That's what I was trying to say. A man should be able to come in and fit in. But you go for it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, But I wasn't saying that we didn't need a man. I, didn't, by I being know you wasn't. I was, yeah. I'm just saying mm-hmm. men take it the wrong way by people, women saying they independent. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean that we don't need or want a man by us being independent. Now, if you are a woman, you have that, that attitude, right? You mm-hmm. have that in the back of your mouth. But then your actions and your words display that you're so independent that you don't need a man, then Mm -hmm. that's that's different. different. Like me, I know how to act like I don't know how to fix a light bulb. I know how to do, you know? Yeah, that's manipulation, though. No, it's not. It's it's not. You got to fix that light bulb, but you must. That's that's a good manipulation, though. That's a good manipulation. My lady is so independent. My lady, she's been doing it on her own for a long time, and I swear, she'd be like, and I, I know she plays this little mind game. She's like, hey, that light need to be changed. Me, my little dumb ass go over here with my chair, you know, chair, and act like I really fix some shit in the house. That's something, like, you're right. Sometimes yeah. a woman, she That's, she's that's a good manipulation, though, out. yeah. Yeah, she's supposed to let you take the woman. Women out. are supposed to make men feel like they need them for something. Right. Whether it's to open up the drawer, open up that jar of pickles or whatever. Yeah, something. Yeah, I need you for something other than, you know what I'm saying? So there it is. But And, and once again, I was trying to the whole EDP and T comment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. So we got Denise. She said, a woman will naturally submit if the man is a trusted leader. She Thank you. Man. But but you gotta prove yourself as a leader Make sure first. Y'all like and share, you, man. We need y'all to like and I, I want to be very clear. You have to prove that you're a leader. There's a lot of busters out here mm-hmm. who have not been taught how to lead. And so what happens is these women go give these men a chance, and they don't know how to lead. So when they, a real leader come along, then he has to take longer. But man. Be patient with our women. Man, I'm so sick yeah. of Kevin. He's making me want to throw up. Today. Some busters came before you, man. Today, man. We just gotta communicate. You is yeah. All Kevin. right. So Quindlin said, the woman who submits to her husband is putting trust in him to make the best decision for the family, providing and protecting the best interests of the woman of the family. However, yes. if a man has shown if a man has shown failures in decision making, mm-hmm. abilities are hard to submit. Yes. I agree. I agree with that. She right. Somebody said, okay, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Who was it said that? Brandy said, okay. Brandy oh, okay. said, how about both people just come to just come together, communicate, and handle business as a team? Society makes stuff harder than what it really is. Now hold up, can I can I comment on that? Because yeah. here, his name was Frank. Yeah, Frank. Frank. Here's why, Frank. Because when something go bump in the night. Can we and me and your can you and your woman play rock scissors and papers? See who gonna check it out? No, it's your job, and I ain't saying it ain't your job. You is supposed to get up and check it out. So that automatically makes you the dominant one. But guess what though? You got to also make that woman feel secure. You can't grab the bat and tell your woman to grab the pistol. You supposed to do all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. That's all I'm saying. All right, man. I think we're done with that topic, man. It's about to get, about to get real serious in here. Let's so, go. Let's get lady, it. Lady, this is this is not a, a laughing topic. So I just want to warn everybody okay. about the conversation we're about to have. Uh, Nay, Nay, Annie. Uh, 
Niani. How did you pronounce this, Nicole? Uh, Niani. Niani. Oh, Finlot Laysan. Man, that is a, her name is <laughs> Nini Fee. All right. So, long story short, uh, she was murdered about four days ago. Mm, uh, sorry to hear that. Los Angeles, uh, uh, Lancaster. Lancaster City police officers uh, in North Los Angeles. She was 27 years old. She was in a domestic uh, violence dispute with her boyfriend. Uh, mm -hmm. Word on the street is, I did a little research, word on the street is she got into an altercation with her boyfriend because he put his hands on her daughter. Um, mm. So she called the police, and in that, in that time, when she called the police, she basically uh, came to the front door with a knife. Now, I do want to warn people, this is graphic. Uh, we did uh, take out the shooting, so you won't see the shooting. But you will see everything leading up to the shooting. So we're we going to watch this clip. And like I said, if you uh, if, if it's cringeworthy for you to see uh, an officer shoot at somebody or anything like that, you can leave a chat. I understand, but I just want to let you know this is a little graphic. We'll be right back with y'all. They're in the back room if they're not answering. Yep. Hold on, hold on. Hey, come out, come out. Yeah, I'm gonna stab him because he just hey. my Can you see anything over there, Chopper? They're in the back room if they're not answering. So that's the actual clip. A uh, young lady was only 27 years old, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, we tend Tragic. to talk about police shootings a lot on this show. And it's just what's happening to our people. Now, I don't want to make this a racist thing because this could have been black, white, anybody mm -hmm. in this situation. Yep. Originally, when I first heard about the uh, situation, everybody was making it sound like it was a wrongful death. I I'm going to be honest with y'all. <clears throat> I feel like she put herself in that situation, coming to the door with a knife and then yelling to the police. I'm about to, she was yeah, going to kill him. Yeah, and I'm going to stab him. Man. And don't get yeah. me wrong, this was a mother's frustration. Her daughter her daughter was saying, he pushed me, he pushed me, he pushed me. So obviously her boyfriend put her hands, his hands on her daughter. Mm -hmm. And her daughter was um, uh, distraught behind the situation. So it made the lady distraught. She had a knife in her hand. She said to the police officers, she's going to murder him. Um, or she said, I'm going to kill him. One of the two. I'm going to stab uh, him. That's what she said. I'm going to stab said. him. Yeah. What's your opinion on that video, Kev? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to pray for that family. I say we should pray for them. Um, I'm going to say women. I'm not going to say sisters. I'm going to say women. I already know that you guys are already women, white, black, Asian, Latina. You're already at a disadvantage when you're dealing with a man. Because nine times out of ten, he's bigger, he's stronger, this, that, and the other. He can impose himself. So I understand that this young lady was at her wit's end, and she was trying to protect her child. And I totally get the headspace she was in. The only problem I had is when they was trying to kick the door in. Now, had you already been in the process of jugging him, that's different. But once you open the door... And you see that the uh, authorities are at the door. That's when you're supposed to come out, drop the knife, and surrender yourself. We've seen enough George Floyds. We heard about too many Breonna Taylors. 
You know what I'm saying? And our Michael Browns and all them that is. So you know, once that you see that's the police, that's the only error in judgment. However, I understand when it's your baby, your child, your seed involved, your mind ain't necessarily thinking right. So I totally get it. But I just say, I think at that point, once the police got to the door, she should have dropped that weapon, surrendered herself, and said, go in and get that motherfucker before I get him. Yeah. What's your opinion, Cole? I agree. Um... Once, once the you call the police and they're there, let them handle yeah. the situation. Um, you got to remember when you do call them, if there is a situation like that, they are trained to kill. Yeah. They are trained to kill. Their it, 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 color has nothing to do with. Nope. It. You know, one, you're threatening someone else's life. Two, you open up the door with a knife. Yeah, that was wild. So right yeah. there, you you the police. You know, may seem some type, feel some type of way right there. Right there, you jeopardize yourself. And then, too, I just think we get so emotional at times. Like, we have to learn what to do with our emotions when we are in those situations. Yes. Because I had this conversation today with some of my um, good friends. We don't know what's in our heart. And when you are put in those situations, you don't know what's coming That's out. True. But she should have, once the police got there, first of all, dropped the knife, opened the door, and then once they get there, like you said, get them before I get them. So can I ask? Oh, I was going to speak on um, a, a situation where I had a do uh, domestic violence call. Um, uh, like I said, I was arguing. I was telling Cody, so I was arguing with my ex, and and I was in her face, and our door was open, um, and I didn't know it. And the cops was called, and the cops came. In, well, the cop came in with his gun, cocked and loaded, pointed directly at me. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Now my reaction. I, I, I was stunned that this cop was in my house, me and my lady arguing like, motherfucker, this mother, you know, typical toxic behavior. And my son walked out the room and my son said, no, that's my dad. Don't shoot him. My son was about 19, 20 years old. And I'll never forget the look on his face with the police officer because the way my son ran out the room and I yelled, officer, that's my son. He's just a kid. He's just a kid. I got on the ground. You know, sometimes you got to understand, like I said, I de-escalated the situation as fast as I could and got on the ground and, and was uh, listening to the orders because he almost could have killed me or my son. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that young lady was wrong because, like you said, she had a lot of emotions involved in that situation. Yeah. But sometimes, like you said, we as, as, as people especially, I'm going to speak for my melanin people, we get so, we got so much bottled up anger in our heart. Towards that authority. we don't know how to control our emotions. Yeah. And I'm, I'm to the point in my life at 43 years old, I'm 43 years old, I'm to the point in my life to where I've, I've done it all when it comes to fighting people, just being wild and crazy. And I'll never put myself in a situation to where police would ever be able to walk through my front door with a gun pointed at me, especially knowing with the Breonna Taylors and all of these Michael Browns and all of these situations. Mm -hmm. It's our job. It's no longer the police job to... Uh, it is their job to protect the service because we pay taxes, but it's no longer... Uh, their job to protect my life. It's my job to protect my life. And that lady, she was wrong in multiple facets. She walked to the door with a knife. She could have got shot for that. Then she told the police, I'm going to kill him. She could have yeah. got shot right there for that. Then she walked up to the man that she was threatening to kill mm -hmm. in front of her daughter. Now, this is the tragic situation. She, Her daughter lost the mother. Uh, her her daughter. So she did also, actually die. Yes, yeah, she died. Okay. Her daughter also witnessed her mother being yeah. shot in and front murdered. of her and killed in front but of her. But then you know you yeah you think about how much of this could have been prevented. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a lot of time we as women we don't pay attention to what we already know, mm -hmm. and I bet you it's so many red flags or things that went on to Even pay trigger. attention. Mm -hmm. Right, so I don't know. I well, and, and can I ask you something? Just and and I do want to sit here, and I don't want to blame the authorities or the police. But do you think this is a situation where maybe they could have used a little more discretion or some non-lethal? I could pull up white videos of white white yeah. men being murdered the same way, well, shot the same way in their house with a knife in their hand, charging at. Somebody I've seen for, several many when they try to talk. Hey, man, just just trying oh, to talk yeah. them down, oh, yeah. and they or they get in the more, middle of them, or, or tase them, or, or mace them, pepper spray them, stick the dog on them. I think as vicious as a lot of 
uh, white people have been. Mm -hmm. It's something genetically in them to where they 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 are not as threatening as somebody black. And like right. I was saying, I was also preferring referring. Oh, they say that black people are automatically more threatening to even it could well, be the smallest well, black person well, in the world. Well, just how, that just white how people you, perceive them as threatening. But yeah. just how you talk though. Yeah. Like this the whole time the way you've been talking to the average person that no the simple minded person. They would think you're being aggressive. Right. No, you're just being passionate about. What there you go. Say. I'm passionate. Yeah, but but it's still who we are as people. Yeah. So even though this lady probably wouldn't have really killed him, she was showing that she was angry. Yeah. And she was showing. And her then she lunged at him. If she wouldn't have lunged at him, but I was just wondering. They is, had a taser out. They could have tased. That's him. that's what I'm saying. Did, could they use some any type? At least but tried this, some line, uh, non 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 lethal measures. This is the scary thing about a taser with a person with a knife in the hand. You tase that person, the knife stabs them from them falling on it. But better them than the other person, right? Let's take let's take that chance mm. than just if you shoot them, you know they're dead. Because cops only shoot to kill. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. They don't shoot the maim. And we can't. And I'm never gonna try to sit here and say, oh, you should have tried to shoot in the leg or the arm. And then when you miss her arm and hit the lady next door who had nothing to do with nothing, no, I'm not gonna make that argument. But I'm just saying sometimes they have discretion. Could she, since it was a knife instead of a gun? And she was X amount of feet away from that man. As you know, she did lunge at him. Could they have at least tried a non-lethal measure first, even though the rest of their comrades had their guns trained on her? That's all I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't put yourself in that situation, then you never have to um, uh, so put your life in a cop's. Right. But it goes back to something that I was thinking about, um, the training. Like yeah. when you have an issue on a job or whatever, you can refer back to your training manual, yep. right? Boxer athletes they refer back to their skills and their training. Their playbook. But yeah. when it comes to emotions, when it comes to mm -hmm. conflicts, when it comes to communication, what training are we falling back on? And so mm. I think that is the problem. Like we're not being trained on how to de-escalate situations or how but to hold up. use situations. But think, actual officers? No, no. The, you teach them about the people. Us. But the, but the, is like, that fair? People, it's not. Fair. It's not fair that we should have to train our. Our kids. I'm talking about yes, yes, it is. It's not fair. I'm saying it, I ain't saying that we should. Fair yeah, that we, we have, have to, to, but, but I'm just saying that's not fair. Train. Cause, 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 uh, little Susie out there ain't she ain't trained intimidated. If you run across the police, put your hands up, identify yourself, and tell them to call your parents. But, all right, so, but with that demeanor, the way I get what you said, my brother, it's not fair. I, no, I get what you said, but you have to hear yourself. Just because it's not fair doesn't mean, mean we don't right. need to do the work. Yeah, we still yeah. got to do it. And, and that's what I'm we saying. Like we got we got to humble ourselves and swallow our pride and say, hey, this is the way life right. is. So so here's the word cool. Back in, the, you know, it goes all the way back to the content of Africa. It used to be a practice where cool meant water, relax, calm. Right? Okay. Just be cool. Chill out. Right? But now we take the word cool, right? It's so different. It's cool to sag. It's cool to, mm. it's cool to do, you know? So mm -hmm. cool, the word cool used to protect us. Yeah. It used to be be cool. It didn't evolved. So now it, it's changed. So I just think, I just think we got to get back to training our young people. We guys got to get back to just training. I agree we do, but how, it's sad. Because Shouldn't. it's killing us. It our is. Our emotion, her actions literally got her, her killed. killed. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Mm. Right, well, so. I'll tell you like this. The way I think about it, if I get pulled over, hopefully I don't. But if I do or whatever, I know that, guess what? This guy doesn't want to kill me. However, he is going in this traffic stop or this uh, inter it's all interaction thinking I will kill him if it's be if he stands in between me going home to my family. So with that in my mind, don't do nothing to give him a reason because a he wants to go home to his family I want to go home to mine. He don't want to do no paperwork I want to do everything to make this come and if you ain't doing black people I'm gonna say this to our people if you ain't up to nothing wrong Do what they say now if they violate your rights record it and get you a lawyer Don't hold court in the streets Make it to get to court don't hold court in the streets because nine and a half times out of ten, they're always going to side with the officer. Yo behind is going to be on a slab and they're going to say, good job. Right, However, if take. you record it, <laughs> take it to court, you then you yeah, might you get a bag. Ahead, Just uh, saying. All right, we got a comment. Um, Leland, she grabbed him, please. Not if my life's on the line. Shoot the kill. Um, okay. Frank, 
He said, they saved that man's life who wasn't the aggressor from what I've seen. So her daughter got to be mad at her mom. Mm. And then Brandy said, now we still got to please the massa to survive. Mm. See, and I, That's I, deep right there. But, that, but that's where we are. That's sad, but that's the world we live in. That's sad. That that's, that one that's, was that's deep the right last there. Last topic. Last topic, man. Last topic of the day. Um, minimum wage is going up. It started uh, this month. Uh, I heard something about this. Yeah. Yep. Let's watch the news clip. We'll be right back. Let's talk about minimum right. wage, man, because I don't think we're making enough money to survive. We ain't. Uh, in the U.S. Let's watch this clip. We'll be right back with y'all. Millions of Americans ringing in the new year with a raise. From coast to coast, a near record number of states are increasing their minimum wage. California is leading the way after Governor Gavin Newsom signed legislation to boost pay for fast food and health care workers. Carter Evans is in Los Angeles with more on the many ways it's already impacting workers and consumers. As a delivery driver for Pizza Hut, Marcelo Sandoval was one of 10 million Americans looking forward to a raise in 2024. He qualified for California's new $20 an hour minimum wage for certain food service workers. Who wouldn't mind getting an extra $4 increase in their pay? 25 states and dozens of municipalities across the country are planning minimum wage increases in 2024, one as high as 2029 an hour, far exceeding the current federal minimum wage of 725 an hour set back in 2009. Because of how rapid inflation has been the past couple of years, the minimum wage increases are keeping up with or slightly exceeding inflation in a lot of states now, actually. But the bigger paychecks will come at a cost, especially at restaurants in California. You know, your burrito costs $15 an hour. It's going to cost 17 I should say. What's the ripple effect going to be? Everyone else has to match, right? Because if you can work at McDonald's or Starbucks for $20 an hour, why would you stay at the kitchen at Olive Garden or, or even at Walmart? Economists believe it could eventually lead to a slight increase in overall inflation and other unintended consequences. But you're not going to see that $20 an hour. Unfortunately, I won't. That's because Sandoval is one of more than 1,100 California delivery drivers Pizza Hut franchises are laying off. Because they don't want to pay you 20 bucks an hour. Exactly. So now, instead of looking forward to a bigger paycheck, he's looking for a new job. <laughs> I felt a little betrayed. I was like... But at the same time, I'm not surprised. For CBS Saturday Morning, Carter Evans, Los Angeles. It's like good news and bad news all mixed in. Oh, yeah. For some people, the good news, but then you still, if everything is costing more, you're not feeling it, and then the layoffs, like that. Got to feel for that guy a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Really. Like, oh, yeah. certainly. Heck, yeah. yeah, yeah. You feel for a lot of the people, too, who are now excited about... All right, so that's the clip, man. I just want to discuss this real quick with y'all. I'm going to be the first to say, man, minimum wage should at least be, uh, I'm going to say about $17 an hour. But just the economy, like, even Between 15 and 20. Store, when we yep. go to grocery store, man, $100, you can get four or five bags of groceries. I remember when I used to spend $200 on groceries. And get a whole bags, basket. Uh, whole <laughs> store, you know, and, 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 yeah. I don't know how the law set up, but I never understood why they, like, why, in our economy, we're watching our Americans struggle, all by sending trillions, which I know everybody gonna say the same thing, sending trillions over to Iraq and to uh, Russia Ukraine for uh, for yeah. war. And it's just mm -hmm. like like Tupac said, they want money for war, but can't feed the poor. And we got these uh, new age citizens that that expect four thousand dollars a month because of COVID. When COVID hit, everybody was thinking it was worth a thousand dollars a week, which I got that shit for a year. A thousand dollars a week is what I got during COVID. But when when it was time to go back to work and I realized I'm not gonna make a thousand two thousand dollars per check, it, it was a, a huge reality check. But I do feel like they should do something to compensate people because of the economy going up. I don't know what the minimum wage should be, but I'm telling you the minimum wage right now uh, at my store alone, I'm only paying, like I'm starting off at like $14 an hour. And I feel bad even telling people that because it's really not a lot of money, but you have to fucking work. That, that's my logic of it. Regardless of, how, I'm not happy with the amount of money I, I make, but I have to work. So I'd be baffled at how people are surviving uh, with the salaries that they make or even not even working at all. So you, I think a lot of people are also at the point where I'm better off being on Section 8. I'm better off getting food stamps per month. That almost sounds kind of better than working a 9 to 5 for crumbs just to pay your bills. Not to me. I'm just saying what yeah. the average person may think. Because to me, I'm going to fucking work. At any point in time, I can decide not to pay this cable bill. At any point in time, I can decide not to pay this light bill. Might not have no lights, 
but I still have money in my pocket. I don't understand the economy. Uh, what do you think about the minimum wage going up? You think it should, Kev? Absolutely. And, and you make here's, good money. Yeah, I, and I do make good money. And um, But I feel like it should go up because it should uh, make it to where people feel like they can go to the store and pay for what they need and walk out that store with dignity. Mm. There's people that are making decisions out here. Do I get my insulin? Do I get my high blood pressure medication? Or do I feed my kids? And when I feed my kids, how many days can I not feed myself? And those are tough decisions no one should have to make the, the, in a first world country. I think that the first thing America could, should really consider, just gonna sound crazy what's about to come out of my mouth, is healthcare should be free. It should be. I think that would- Other countries where it stuff. is, there's less crime too. Yeah, Sweden and all that, Denmark, they got free health care. Now, granted, their taxes is higher, but guess what? Rent is way lower. <laughs> yeah, so I agree with that. No, that ain't crazy. That... What do you think, Cole? I, I do agree. It should increase. Um, <laughs> with everything else increasing, inflation, I, I really think they do inflation just to see if we got extra money out here mm. because mm. we spend it, yeah. right? We buy it. So... I come from the entrepreneurship world, so being on a job was one. Of, what this was one of the reasons why I left a job. Well, I'm, I'm still working a job, but this is one of the reasons why I'm transitioning out from you know working full full time. And I just believe you have to get creative, mm. right? I don't believe in one source of of income. income. Right. I just don't, right? So my creativity will open up doors for me even you know this is just one source of income I can't do anything about minimum wage not going on but all I can do is control those factors that I can control like I can't try to live on a champagne life and I got a beer budget thank you it don't work so I have to make those choices yeah. that I need to be you know and I have to prioritize my needs and my wants I can't control you know I, the I, always, I always tell people uh, I work my nine to five uh, this is what makes me be in a happy space too, mentally happy space. Uh, doing a nine to five to provide for my show, um, now our show, to provide for our show. Working a nine to five is to provide for a show that I'm creating uh, uh, that will eventually have real good revenue. Um, and the show is growing every day. I am not making no money, but it's still the goal. Mm -hmm. So I go to work and, and I say, I said, put this aside. Okay, this needs to be for the show. Okay, I need new equipment. I need this, I need that. But I'm working a nine to five, but still at the same time providing for my. But can I say something though? Yes, sir. Maybe you're not making money, but maybe what you need to not be thinking about is in a monetized sense. But maybe you reaching your people, exactly. and you are saying oh, some yeah, yeah. Uh, reaching, uh, talking about some topics that people really be thinking about, mm -hmm. and they can take some of this and digest it. And bring it out to the community, and oh, then be and you, the yeah, you know how it is. Each one, a uh, reach one, teach one, yeah. and you know, and it goes on and on. And maybe you're not making a lot of money, but you might be making a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, and I'm just the, I just believe in ownership. You know, um, if you do some research, the average person is only gonna make like twenty five dollars on a job, and then they tap, they pretty much tap out. Average person. My dad I, if you, if you, I'll bring that back next time. Okay. I about to say my dad been in his job for thirty years, and, mm. uh, and I, I mean I, I doubt he ain't making thirty five dollars an hour. You mm. know what I'm saying? And he been there for thirty mm. years. Yes. But he probably started when minimum wage was like two fifty. Yeah. He started with like five dollars or something like that. Mm. Hey guys. Hey we guys. got one coming. Time to go. <laughs> Gwendolyn said Warren Buffett himself says never have one source of income. And then but, Nicole Smith said ownership. Okay, let me say one thing real quick. So what about if, okay, you got multiple streams of income, but if you just took this one job, it'll blow all three of those out. Would you, What would you do? Just keep those three? Bitch, I know what you're saying, that if one of those fall, you got these two to fall back on. If one, But what if you got this one that'll blow all those out the water? Go get the bag or take those little bags? What happens if that one goes? That's true, but... What happens when it stays? Huh? So it's it's either it's what you. Prefer, but I'm asking you. I'm asking you a person. But it's what, what you would you prefer. do? It's what you prefer. Because I, still, I know I. I still will keep my avenues like open. But what if that's not an option for but you? That's me. Because though. that one bag, that big bag, that requires or demands 
most of your a time. Lot of people start that way. So it's, that's, you said that like it's, that's that's odd. No, that's I play that's three sports. Yeah. I know how to juggle this thing. Hey guys. <laughs> hey guys. I don't have time for nothing other. And now you're right. I just make sure. To but all that's my Negro <laughs> friends. Look, this is the smartest dumb people. Anthony, that dude Johnson, my new, my brand new co-host, yeah. Coley Cole in the building. I appreciate you, Queen. I'm yes. loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. He ain't yeah. offered me a contract yet, yeah. but it's all good. No, it's all good. No, don't I'm worry about it. <laughs> I'm a freelancer, y'all. Like, I'm a freelancer. Yeah, this is the smartest dumb yeah. people. Anthony, that dude Johnson, Nicole in the building, Kevin Kev. Y'all have a great night. Yo, yo, what's up? At the hottest podcast in the city, the smartest dumb people. I'm here with my nigga, that dude Johnson. You know what I'm saying? We go way back like four flats on the Cadillac. Y'all tune in every week or every time. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Do what you